Hey everyone, the College Railroader here, and look what I have just purchased recently. It is a beautiful N scale N Prairie 262 locomotive for my N scale set. I am so excited to look into it, to do a cool unboxing, haven't done those for a while. Um, and just kind of show you the difference. Um, I know I typically always show my HO scale uh, collection, but this time I wanted to show N scale as for most model railroaders, if they have uh, problems acquiring enough space, like I do sometimes. Um, all you just need is one big table or even two tables together, and you can have a great big layout. So come follow me. We're gonna go over this awesome locomotive, have it see run around, and some other cool things. Let's go. So right upon opening it, right on the sides, we already have the paperwork with it. That way, in case we have to look at uh, if any parts are broken, we can kind of reassemble it ourselves. Again, the N Prairie 262 and Tender, of course. Um, it's also the Burlington route, which is very nice. Uh, right upon opening it, it slides off. You already have this protection over here, which I love. If I'm just gonna carefully open it out. There's one piece of the paperwork. That's just the copy that kind of almost like a receipt from Bachman that says that, you know, you've picked up the train. Wow. So just look inside again, right? I just took off the covering as well as a little plastic film that was on the inside. Um, again, this is end scale we're talking about, right? So these are tiny, right? Like the whole train's just as tall, you know, just slightly taller than my fingernail. Granted, I have big thumbs, but it's the whole train right honestly but look at the detail right you see the coal on top here let's just take out the tender first wow so you have the riveting over here i believe this is where the, either the water would go or just any op other openings so over here we have of course where the coal is very detailed little doors on the side the handrails over here right they're added on they're not just molded onto it and look at the riveting detail on the sides too right Wow, amazing. Let's see the undercarriage. Oh my goodness. See, this is why. See, Bachman does such a great job. Look at the riveting detail underneath. All that molding bits over here. The other pipes and canisters and stuff, which you would rarely ever see in a train. And yet, they still add the detail on here. Again, it says it's, of course, from Bachman. Um... Which is very, very interesting train. I like how it feels. Um, again, very lightweight. It also is just a regular uh, hook, unlike the other trains that I have for example. If you remember when I reviewed the Norfolk Southern train, this diesel right over here, right? It had a different hook. So we're dealing with two different hooks of the trains. I guess this must be the older versions. These are, might have been the newer versions. I'm not quite sure. Um, but what's nice is you can also have freight cars like I do that kind of has a Frankenstein where it has both of the hooks on it for both trains to pull. Um, even on the end, it has like a pretend light. It doesn't work um, because there's no wiring and there's no metal underneath besides, of course, the metal rails itself. So it's just a little piece of plastic. But really, really nicely detailed and just the tender alone. Hear that? That metal sound. Oh, metal wheels on metal rails, my favorite. Let's carefully grab the train. Oh gosh. So my one um, problem of end scale locomotives, and it's not anyone's fault, I think it's more for me, they're so delicate. Um, though this has some weight to it, because of course have the chassis is built where it has the you know, the six wheels together, that's always working, where these two are just kind of the add-on wheels. Um, I always get so nervous when holding these kind of trains uh, in case, you know, God forbid, it slips out of my hand, it drops, it's so tiny, or if a piece falls on the floor, I'm, I'm never gonna find it, right? And so it's always just making sure that you have these kind of locomotives stayed in pristine condition, or, you know, I always, when I'm done playing with them, I always put it right back in the packaging. I don't even leave it on the layout. I'm okay leaving the diesels out in the layout because if they fall, they have such a thick shell that it's fine. If these fall or something scratches, it doesn't work. I'm kind of lost. I'm at a loss and I don't know what happened. But regardless of how I feel about picking them up, you can't compete with this detailing on the top. Again, the riveting over here. Um, I believe this is an actual light. I'm not, oh wait. Uh, oh, nope, not a light. Nope, just added onto it, but it's really cool. And I don't even know if the camera could even pick it up. 
there's even little words right there. Look at that. 2090. That's its phone. That's its phone number. That's its uh, number on its cab. Um, again, like I said, it is a Burlington route, as it said, of course, on the tender. Um, but if you can already see how intricate the motors are on the side, right? All the pistons are in working order. Um, just seeing how everything moves. It's going to be really cool to finally put him on um, and to play with a whole bunch of cool freight cars that I have. Um, the sides, of course, are very detailed, too. There's no uh, nothing inside the cab itself. You don't see any fireboxes or any valves or anything because it's covering by the model uh, motor. And that makes sense. Again, these things are so small. I would have liked to have seen more detail in there, but that's okay. The bells and whistles on top look very nice. I like that it's a different color. Again, you see all the guardrails and such. The riveting detail is very nice. Um, the back wheel is very interesting as it is just one whole solid um, cylinder, basically, on the back. Um, and I know it's kind of like, like a semi-guiding rail or guiding wheel, but it's just loosely placed on the back where if I just kind of flick it, um, yes, it stays on, but to me, it just doesn't feel um, secured enough. Maybe just because it's just that type of train. Um, connecting it, of course, you know, you just attach it underneath. There's like a little um, stem piece right here. You're just going to simply just click it on and there it stays and it won't go anywhere. So we'll put it back down, of course, right on the track. And there we go. And so it just wants to perfectly just stay up there. Um, and then I'm gonna have the train run around with a couple of freight cars. I do still have some wonderful and fantastic passenger cars. We're gonna have that train pull it around too. Um, I know that my tracks don't agree with the um, wheels of those passenger cars. So we'll see what happens if I'll be able to pull them or not. But let's get started and let's kinda, let's play with some trains. So overall, this is such a very impressive locomotive. Um, despite its small size, as you saw, it could pull a lot. Um, I know those were only nine cars that I was pulling, um, but I had an older um, caboose that just doesn't fit with the back car, that grain hopper, just because the hook broke off. So at one point in time, I was able to pull 10 cars. Um, and again, having these tables be on a very flat surface, of course, is part of the battle to make sure that the train can pull more. Um, I think there was like a slight centimeter, millimeter difference of these two tables. So sometimes the train kind of goes slower when it crosses. Um, but that's also my own fault because I like trying to have a bigger layout when really one table with a smaller version of this kind of cross layout would have been just fine. Um, and this also just goes to show again where if you have very limited space, um, it's really all about knowing what scale you're looking for. So for example, for end scale, you can have two tracks going inside each other, kind of looping in on itself because of that cross track that we have in the back as you guys saw the locomotive going over it. At some points, the locomotive, because of how it's made, 
Um, it did kind of hesitate. It jumped a little bit over the cross, but that's um, normal with a lot of small locomotives as only the middle kind of has the pickup to go over it. And because of the plastic on the inside of those crosses it's to make sure all the rails don't kind of you know blow a circuit on itself, it kind of hesitates. Whereas some of the diesels, for example, like the Norfolk Southern, where it has to pick up on both um, ends of its wheels so it can slowly glide across. That's just, just is how these kind of trains are built. Um, I was very impressed that even going backwards, I found that it looked like it was even stronger going backwards, which then made me investigate the tender of the car. And it looked like that two of the wheels weren't um, spinning as fast as the other ones were. And I wasn't just so sure if that's just how it is, or do I have to screw something in tighter or loosen it? I, I couldn't tell. Um, I prefer HO scale. Um, that's just kind of a little bit of a bias of mine, just because I've always had it. I've worked more alongside it, so I know if there's a problem, I can fix it. If anything happens to any of these trains on end scale, um, it's a bit of a learning curve for me. So I have to try to teach myself how to work with smaller screws and springs and wheels and all that stuff. Um, so I'll probably just fix it up. I'll be able to just, you know, if anything, take the wheel out, put it back in again. Something like that. It shouldn't be that hard. Um, when I do work on end scale, I always kind of carry or I always have some sort of um, almost like containers that you would usually store with these trains. So for example, if I was working on something, I would be working and putting everything in the little container. So God forbid if something falls out, I still have it, I still see it. Um, again, very impressive, even pulling just two of those Penn Central cars that I got from Micro Trains line. Um, obviously, of course, again, the radius, my small radius, which is 11.25 inches, is not made for those passenger cars. So, you know, with a little bit of a tricky hump there, but great train. Um, I even found this one on Amazon, I wanna say for only $80, $90, which, in the grand scheme of things, that's pretty good. Um, even for Bachman standard, that's that's pretty good. Um, unfortunately, there were no lights. Um, I think some areas, I think they could have done a little bit more detailing, um, but is it worth the price for $80 if you just want a little locomotive to go around? Of course it is. But yeah, overall, um, very well detailed. Um, I'd recommend getting it, I would, or any other type of locomotive, because I've always loved locomotives more than diesels. But with taking on locomotives, you have to be very aware of the numerous mechanisms in order to make the train look as real and authentic as possible, such as the wheels and the axles with the pistons moving. Whereas for a diesel, all you do is slap the shell on the train and watch it go. So it's, you know, buyer beware, making sure that you know what you're working with and how to do it effectively. But just like that, and just like that, we're on the right track. I'll see you real soon when we come back. Thank you so much for watching the College Railroader today. Be sure to be on the lookout for more videos to come. Take care, everybody.